Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. As I mentioned before, we always love it when readers send us interesting malware. In the latest case, Vince sent us a Word document that looked malicious, had all the hallmarks of being malicious. And Vince actually started analyzing it and he tried to follow a procedure that Didier had outlined in a prior diary, but it didn't quite work. So Didier took a look at this particular document. And well, the problem here was that the value of the variable that you have to actually search for was obfuscated itself. And deobfuscating this isn't really all that trivial. So Didier shows in his latest diary a little shortcut where you're really just looking for long strings in the document and that led Didier then to the malware. Now, the PowerShell script in this document was obfuscated itself again using a fairly, well, by now, I guess, standard obfuscation technique that DDE calls dosfuscation for its use of DOS commands. The PowerShell script turned out to be a downloader. It did attempt to download malware from five different URLs that then turned out to be an Emotet variant. And ESET published an interesting report with a collection of various open SSH backdoors that they found in the wild. Open SSH backdoors are a common way for an attacker to get persistence and also to do some lateral movements. So what happens here is that the attacker first gets root access on a system, then uses the access to install a Trojan version of the OpenSH server. Typically what happens here is that credentials that are being passed to the server are being logged and exfiltrated. They of course also can provide static credentials that can then be used to log in even after the user has deleted any additional accounts the attacker set up or changed any passwords on the system. EZ identified 21 different families of OpenSSH backdoors. Now, as far as preventing these backdoors, first of all, don't have your system compromised in the first place. Secure SSH by not using usernames and passwords, but using only keys. And then finally, it is of course really good to have some kind of code integrity tool that makes sure that critical system binaries like the OpenSSH server are not replaced. And then we have a second story from ESET Security, and this one about uh, some pretty tricky Android malware. Now this malware doesn't come from the official Google Play Store, but from a third party store. And it claims to be a battery optimization application. Now if you download and launch the application, nothing really appears to happen. And well, you probably wouldn't really expect much. Uh, after all, it's just supposed to magically optimize your battery lifetime. Well, uh, but then you will see a pop up from something called the enable statistics service and it will ask access to your accessibility features, which allows this application to observe your screen and also to retrieve window content. And the way this is abused is if you now start the PayPal app and log in, then this application will take over because it observed your screen, it noticed you logged into PayPal, PayPal and it will transfer money to the attacker. So the main problem here is again, not really a vulnerability in either the PayPal app or Android, but uh, really just the user giving the application permission to do its evil thing. And of course, enable statistics doesn't really sound like a malicious application. And there are a lot of applications that do ask for access to details about your system in order to collect some statistics to optimize the application. So users may not be suspicious if they're seeing yet another one of these pop ups. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.